Good day, fellow investor. Buying a stock is easy. The difficult part is know when to sell a stock. And in this video, we'll discuss seven strategies on why and when you should think about selling a stock. One of my research platform members bought Amazon in 2003 at 30 and then sold at 50. So he made a great gain in a few months but this is what happened afterwards. So yes, you can dwell about what will happen in the future, but the impossibility of knowing what will happen in the future makes selling so difficult. Perhaps these seven strategies will help you in making such decisions or not feeling bad about the inevitable mistakes that you will surely make. At the end, we'll come back to this chart and please let me know in the comments what do you think about the position, the, bow, the buy and the sale. The seven strategies we'll discuss are when something changes, when the reason why you bought changes, how does the risk and reward of the investment change over time, whether are you going to do portfolio rebalancing because a certain weight in your portfolio is different? You have found something better, my favorite and number four reason to sell something. Of course, you can then use stop losses if that is part of your strategy. Number six, reaching your goal. And number seven, Warren Buffett, never. Let's start with the discussion one by one. Throughout the video and the motivation for this video was my recent stock sale of Skatex Solar, which was 20% of my portfolio and I liquidated the complete position. And there have been a lot of questions. Why did you sell? Why did you do that? So I decided to make a video because selling is extremely important, extremely difficult, and I hope this video helps you. If you get some value from this video, from this channel, you enjoy this, please click that like to support the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please also subscribe. It means a lot. We donate the proceeds from the YouTube channel to charities, so you also help the world by subscribing to this channel. Thank you very much. Let's go into the seven strategies. So I have sold Skatex Solar. It's a company that builds solar plants across the globe, especially in emerging markets. And I have bought it two years ago the first time. Then I bought a little bit more a year and something ago. Now the stock has doubled almost since then so and quadrupled since my first purchase. So I have decided to sell, take the money and you'll see over this video what is the reasoning behind it. Of course, every position is different, every stock is different, everything is different. So, so all these decision-making weights will be different related to each strategy on the specific situation. In this video, I will discuss, I will give a percentage weight to each of the seven strategies that impacted my reason to sell. And hopefully it will help you also in the future when you make your own decisions. So let's start with the reasons why I bought this company, Skatex Solar. The growth was 25%, the safe earnings yield, cash flow yield that I calculated from all the projects that they were making was between 10 and 15%, and they were in a positive structural trend, which was solar stocks, and solar stocks were cheap, especially two years ago in 2018. But the growth as the company expanded, delivered on the growth. So growth expectations have slowed a bit down to 10 to 15%, still great. The safe earnings yield is now because of the higher stock price is not 10 to 15, is around 5%. And in the positive structural trend, everybody's crazy about solar operations, renewables. There is higher competition that has impacted margins a little bit. So I would say that from all the seven strategies, this change in the business, which is still a great business, still a great company, it will still grow, it will still increase earnings over time, but things have changed, especially because the stock price went up, but that will be in the second decision. 
and this has weighted, let's say, 15% on my decision making why I sold. In general, many things can change the fundamentals, there can be bad news, fraud, the management can do something, the management can do an acquisition that you don't like, the economy can enter into a depression, uh, the sector might be looked badly upon. So many, many things can change, but you have to see, okay, what has changed? Is it a per permanent change or it's just short-term noise? And perhaps the best way to see how all of these possible things impact the investment is to look at the second strategy when it comes to thinking about selling a stock, which is portfolio risk and reward. So how does the risk and reward of the investment fit the specific investment, but also your portfolio? For me, especially risk, investing risk is not the volatility. Investing risk is the function of the price. The higher the price, the higher is the risk, the lower the price is all other equal, the lower is the risk and the higher is the return. So this channel is about low risk, high reward investing. And with my Scatec Solar, so when I bought, in my perspective, the risk was very low because the likely return was really high and it is a good business, good management, good everything. So in this, chart i discovered it only in 2018 not earlier but you see okay up till here somewhere the risk was really low and the returns high then suddenly the world got crazy got really exuberant about renewable stocks the stock doubled the fundamentals didn't improve that much now the return is between three and five percent okay growth will be 10 15 percent but the risk is much higher from that perspective so in this case the risk has changed the risk has increased, the return has declined, and this impacts significantly my decision-making process. So as the price increases, so does the risk when it comes to investing, because as the price increases, then the business has to or deliver on riskier things, riskier promises to justify the higher price. That is investing. And let's now combine the first two strategies on an example. Berkshire. For example, let's say you bought Berkshire in 2007 because you like the price earnings ratio, you like the exposure to the American economy, and then later you saw the stock drop 40% to a low of 78,000 in February 2009. So you bought something, the American economy crashed, and also the fundamentals of Berkshire crashed because the price earnings ratio went from 13, which let's say it's a good price earnings ratio, to 50. So the fundamentals have changed. The exposure to the American economy because of the crisis is also something that might have changed the reason why you bought. But when you look at the risk reward, the risk has declined significantly and the likely reward has improved because the stock price dropped 40%. So yes, things and the reasons why you buy something might change, but always look at the risk and reward. Unfortunately, the market started selling because of the bad economy. They didn't start buying because of Berkshire being a great business. That was a big mistake, of course, for those that sold 2008-2009. But the market doesn't understand this low risk, high reward. They think high risk means high reward, which in value investing is the opposite. And that's what we do on this channel. So please subscribe if you like this value investing mindset. All right, the third strategy is portfolio rebalancing. Now, if you have a portfolio like the all weather portfolio from Ray Dalio that has a specific asset class allocation, he's more complicated. He looks at the risk. But if you have something like that, then you might sell when a portfolio exposure increases and buy something else. This actually mechanically 
makes investing really simple and the decisions really simple. Let me explain. So let's say that you have decided to have a 10% exposure to gold, that you bought the Barrick Gold a year and a half ago, now for 10% of your portfolio, now that would be 20% of your portfolio. According to this exposure, you should sell 50% of it and perhaps buy oil stocks and something else that are in trouble now and then increase the exposure to those sectors. The thing with such a strategy of asset allocation of portfolio balancing is that it forces you to sell into exuberance mechanically and buy and to be greedy when others are fearful because you sell what has done well where the market is exuberant about gold stocks gold going to 2000 or who knows cryptocurrencies whatever is the asset allocation and then it forces you to buy what is forgotten by the market so it is really a strategy where you buy low and sell high which is the opposite of what usually the market does so see how this fits your strategy i don't have a portfolio asset allocation or specific allocation to sectors i look at specific businesses their cash flows and i balance those so in my case this strategy which is a great strategy for others has no impact so zero percent weight on my decision making related to scatec solar but if you fancy something like this and if you like to put something on automatic you might want to think about having an asset allocation and then when that asset allocation gets up five percent bring it out to 10%, there are capital gains taxes involved. So see also where you live and what's your capital gains treatment. But it is a strategy that helps Ray Dalio do what he did and the strategy that actually works. My favorite and oh, what the reason, the biggest reason, 50% of my decision making in selling Scatec is there is something better out there but what does it mean there is something better how do you find something better well i look at the fundamentals i look at the cash flow yields i try to have let's say a 15 percent investment return target and then i see what goes above depending on how the stock prices move on that long-term fundamental target that i have and then compare and then see when Am I going to switch from one to the another? A great help in that decision-making process was John Templeton and I found his strategy and I still find it a great strategy. His strategy is to sell something when there is something 50% better. How do you calculate that? Let's say the true value of a stock is the same, is equal that the number isn't that important, but true value is equal. But stock A trades at $50, stock B trades at 40. The difference is 10. $10 on the 40 is 25% upside. So it's really not 50% better. You don't sell, you wait. When stock B trades at 30, keep in mind these are theoretically equal stocks, the difference now is 20 and now it's a 66% upside so much better than 50% B is much better than A 50% and more so then you sell A and buy B. So with such a strategy you constantly compare but you wait for those big swings. So Scottex Solar went up, something else went down and I um, have yesterday, I have bought more of that something else because I think in the long run, it will help me compound faster. Perhaps in the next six months, that will change. I'll come back into Scatex Solar. It's a great business. I'll keep covering it. I'll keep watching it. But this is why I sold at least half of my decision-making weight. So perhaps also look at your portfolio and see if there is something 50% better based on your investing strategy and criteria, then you might want to think about switching. Another 
strategy is a stop loss order. So a stop loss order is where you put a certain price and you say when the stock falls at, and reaches that price, it automatically sells the stock. This helps you hopefully avoid a loss on something that you have bought in the past. This is something not that I that I don't do because I am a fundamental investor, value investor, and when a stock price goes down, I usually buy more because I liked it here. It means that here I would like it even more. But you have to see how stop losses fit your investment strategy. Where stop losses works, and I have looked at this article from Professor Lo which I have quoted many, many times in my PhD, and they have found that stop losses, really stop losses, and improve the value to a strategy is with momentum strategies. So a stock that is in momentum, really growing fast, there you might want to put a stop loss, perhaps even a trailing stop loss. So a stop loss that goes up as the stock price goes up, and then when the stock falls, let's say five, seven, ten percent, then it automatically sells. So you don't have to think about selling here, you let the momentum run, and then before the next crash, then it sells your stock. So you might want to read this article, a really nice article that will explain a bit how things work. Zero impact on my decision making. As I said, I don't use stop losses, but on a video why to sell a stock, stop losses are inevitable because many sell just to stop losses. The next reason to sell, perhaps the most beautiful reason to sell, is when you have reached your goal. I certainly don't want to be on the top 20 billionaire list. I don't want to be Warren Buffett with 80 billion or something like that. I prefer to be something like Munger with one, two, three billion, a few billions, one here and there. That will be totally enough for me in the future. And uh, I'm not going to look at every dollar that I spend in order to reach Buffett status. I'm happy with Munger status. So whenever my portfolio reaches a level that I'm happy with, especially my private portfolio, also shared on my stock market research platform, I might sell something, we just sold stocks to buy a house, I might sell more stocks to buy something else. Perhaps it will be another house here on the coast, or perhaps a nice boat to enjoy this beautiful sea, or something else, you never know. According to Steve Jobs, don't be the richest man in the cemetery. Enjoy life, have a great life, and also spend your money when the investing has allowed it. Opposite to Steve Jobs is of course Warren Buffett and strategy number seven. Holding period forever, never ever you should sell a stock. Well, you have to be very careful with Warren Buffett. There is what he says, the nice grandpa that we all see on television, and there is what he does. 2009 portfolio, these were the holdings of the stock. 2019 portfolio, so 50% uh, of the stocks are gone. Walmart, Tesco, that was a mistake. Then there was IBM. We have seen him selling airlines, etc., etc. So Warren Buffett does indeed buy and sell stocks. Of course, he held to Coca-Cola. He is still, uh, BYD, I think they still have. American Express is still there. So Wells Fargo is there. But Warren Buffett also is limited by his size. He's not able to just sell everything on the market when it has reached a certain level. And he also likes to use those dividends. He doesn't really manage to balance or he isn't such a strict trader to do that. Also, he leaves them, he lets it be. His returns will always be Great, but let me show you an example. So he bought Coca-Cola in 1988. Then the stock really exploded over the next 10 years. He made, what, 25 times his money. He didn't sell. And since then, the stock went from 24 to 50, which 
with an average dividend yield of 1.5% is around 5% per year, which is just a quarter of the 20, 15, 20 he still targeted at that time. So not selling here was a mistake, but it's very difficult for him to sell here. The stock would likely crater, which means he couldn't do it. But I'm sure he would have done it because the yield was just 0.73%. The price earnings ratio was also much higher than when he bought. So he wouldn't have bought, but he didn't sell because of probably size. Similarly with Apple, the business is now a different business from when he bought his chunk. His position has more than doubled and the five year change is 338%. On similar earnings than those were a few years ago. He has such a chunk of Apple, he has so much money that it doesn't make sense to sell now, but we as retail investors can always think about selling. And selling will always make lead to mistakes. I have sold, this is Alatzer Gold, the gold mining company that I bought here somewhere. I have sold it when it doubled a little bit less than doubled because I thought oh no, I don't know I don't want exposure to gold too risky whatever but I missed huge upside where it is now so selling will always be involving mistakes I'm sure I'll make more mistakes and now let me know in the comments below whether this at 30 sold at 50 was a mistake from a fundamental perspective, let's imagine that from 2004 onwards you don't know what has happened. And this is hindsight bias, this is very dangerous. But from a strategy perspective, he bought the stock likely because he wanted it to go up, it did go up, and then he sold. So always think about, okay, why you bought, what is your strategy, the risk reward, and I really hope that these strategies help you in making your investment decisions. And really let me know in the comments what you think about them. To conclude about selling, the most important thing is that you, with the financial instruments you decide to take, that you reach your goals. You should never risk for anything in life not reaching your goals. So at some point in time, it will be time to sell and think about it. Your life is more important, the quality of your life and everything, than the number on your portfolio account. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Share this video also. It's part of my free course, so you can share also the free course. The more, the merrier. Help support the channel. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.